It's a new year, but the streaming wars continue. One of my favorite streaming services from a couple years back has kind of stumbled more recently. One of my least favorite streaming services from a couple years back has actually made some huge improvements. Today, I'm gonna stop and rank the top streaming services from the worst to the best. As I go into this, I'm ranking them based off their original content, their archive, you know, the older shows and movies that they have, the unique value that they offer, kind of like, do they have sports, live TV, or other perks? The user interface, how easy is it to use their streaming service? And the fifth one, how often do I use the streaming service? I didn't include services like Crunchyroll or Shudder because inherently they're more niche and the ones I'm discussing in this video are kind of full service. And let's get started. In last place, Apple TV Plus. Simply put, they have some awesome original content, but there's simply not enough on there that draws me back to the platform frequently enough. Now on the positive, they've always been very creator friendly. They've gone after top talents and kind of given them the freedom to tell the stories that they want to tell. So very early on, they started getting awards recognition, winning Oscars. A few years back, they started the show Ted Lasso. I think the first season of Ted Lasso is one of the best seasons of television ever. They have put out movies from Scorsese, Ridley Scott in just the last few months. And so they do have some incredible exclusives, but on the bad side, they simply don't have the archive content that everybody else has. Whereas if you go to any of the other streaming services on here, they have licensed content from all these different studios and so you go there frequently to watch a lot of different stuff, not just the originals and Apple TV Plus simply doesn't have that. Likewise, they don't have enough A-tier brands to where when they put something on there, it makes a gigantic ripple, gets people talking, and creates must-watch TV. I feel like they have a lot of shows and movies that kind of go into the, oh, I'll add that to my list category, where someone says, this is really good. Have you watched this show yet? And I'll go, oh, that sounds interesting. I'll watch that when I have time. But it doesn't have that oomph to where you just feel like you need to rush and watch it immediately. And even when it comes to their exclusives, because they release their films in theaters, you don't even sometimes realize they're Apple TV Plus originals. So case in point, Killers of the Flower Moon and Napoleon. These are very expensive films from top tier, historically fantastic directors, but I watched their movies in the theater. As a theater lover, that's great, but this ranking is about the streaming services themselves, and I watched their premium content somewhere besides their streaming service, and that's a problem where they do have really great things. They're creating amazing things, but they're not creating the scenario that it drives you to their streaming service enough. So in the case of me, the way that I use it, they'll put something awesome on there. I'll use their streaming service for a couple of weeks to watch this show or movie, and then I won't even open it for several months until the next big thing comes out. Today's video is brought to you by Magic Spoon. My New Year's resolution is to exercise more, cut back on sugar and add more protein. And Magic Spoon makes those last two easier and more delicious than ever. Magic Spoon is a high protein, zero sugar, keto friendly, gluten free, grain free and soy free cereal. They offer a variety pack with four flavors, cocoa, fruity, frosted and peanut butter. This pack has zero grams of sugar, 13 to 14 grams of protein and four to five grams of net carbs and only 100 140 calories a serving. My personal favorite is to combine peanut butter and cocoa together. In fact, I'll just sit there and eat it as a crunchy snack while watching movies. Go to magicspoon.com slash Sean Chandler to grab a variety pack and try it today. Be sure to use our promo code Sean Chandler at checkout to save $5 off your order. And Magic Spoon is so confident in their product, it's backed with a 100% happiness guarantee. So if you don't don't like it 
for any reason, they will refund your money 100% no questions asked. Remember, start the new year off with a delicious bowl of high protein cereal at magicspoon.com slash Sean Chandler and use the code Sean Chandler to save $5 off. Thank you, Magic Spoon, for sponsoring today's video. Number eight, Peacock, a good enough streaming services that checks all the boxes that it's supposed to, but without really doing all that much to kind of wow me or pull me into their streaming platform. On the positives, they are tied to Universal, so you get a bunch of fantastic Universal films on there. They've done things like releasing Five Nights at Freddy's day and date release. That's the network that has the office on it and they have the extended cut. So it even does kind of the deep dive version of that. There's other big shows on there like Yellowstone, which as soon as I got hooked on that one, binged through the entire thing. It does have sports on it if you're a sports fan. And they're affiliated with WWE, Hallmark, Telemundo, Focus, Premier Network, MSNBC. So they have big brands tied to them. They've got Universal. There's quite a bit there if you particularly like some of the brands they're tied to. But as for me, none of those are actually things that excite me all that much. Some of that's just a matter of what I personally watch. I'm not into professional wrestling. I'm not into Hallmark movies. I don't watch enough or know enough Spanish to be able to watch Telemundo. I don't get my news from MSNBC. So you go, oh, they've, they've got a bunch of brands, but not ones that actually draw me to their platform. Beyond that, their interface just kind of runs a little bit slow to where when you kind of click the button, it feels like there's a little pause before it switches to the next layer and the way I'm browsing through things. And that sort of thing makes it so that when I'm just trying to find something to watch when I have a free moment, I want to use one that has a quicker browsing experience. So something simple like that can make me not go to their platform as much just to use it for general viewing. Their exclusives are distinctly mediocre to where there are some brand names in here, Twisted Metal, Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, Ted, John Wick, but the actual releases themselves, not all that spectacular. The Continental, the John Wick show, watched the first episode, I was like, that's good enough, and never watched the next two episodes. Ted, you got Seth MacFarlane. You have a big hit movie from over 10 years ago, but it feels like, Ted, really? Now in the year 2024? I, I haven't watched the show, but it just, like, that sort of thing excites me. Fresh Prince of Bel-Air minus Will Smith. You go, okay, I get the, I know what it is. I know the brand, but that's not particularly exciting to me. And so that's kind of the problem they run into is that it doesn't seem like they, they have anything that's super broad appeal that'll pull a bunch of people in besides being tied to Universal and having that archive of films and sometimes getting those movies literally day and date release. So it, it's good, but there's better streaming services out there. Next up, Hulu. I put this one very much in the same sort of category as Peacock, where it's good enough, but with Hulu, I don't think it has a distinct identity. And more and more, it feels obsolete, so much so that it's already starting to merge with Disney Plus and will disappear soon enough. Like on the positive, they do have some really good exclusives on there. Only Murders in the Dark, my wife really likes that one. The Bear is winning all kinds of awards currently. And then they put out Prey a year and a half ago. And then they have things like sports on there, anime, which because they have anime on there, that means I don't normally need to be signed up for Crunchyroll because my kids can get their anime fix off of Hulu. They have a nice TV archive of older TV shows. And by older, I mean like from 15, 20 years ago that are shows that like I really enjoy like Smallville 24. And instead of needing to dig out my DVD set from my garage, I can just open up Hulu and they've got all these shows that I love from my early adult life. And I really enjoy that it's an integrated service. And so you have the base Hulu stuff, but then you can get stars and these other things that add on to it. And you can expand the what you have access to. And that's actually what I wish the streaming service was as a whole as an industry rather than having a zillion streaming services. But as I mentioned before, on the negative side, it doesn't really have much of its own identity anymore. In particular, what I mean by that is when it launched, it had a clear identity. It was known for, it got its initial subscribers and followers like me because they offered network TV shows the day after they aired on streaming. 
So like I've never had cable. My antenna doesn't work very well at my house. So for years, I watched a bunch of TV shows using Hulu. But as time has passed, most of the major networks have launched their own streaming service or partnered with the streaming service. So Hulu isn't distinct in that anymore. Likewise, network television, a lot of the stuff that they had at the beginning isn't as good as it used to be. And all of the great shows that I watch are normally streaming or cable shows. So Hulu does have a nice archive of content. It just kind of feels kind of random. It's just stuff that I like. So like Peacock, if it's all you had, there's a lot of movies and TV shows to pick from. But there's better services that are great at specific things where Hulu is just kind of good. Number six, Paramount Plus, and this is the most improved streaming service. In its original form, it was called CBS All Access, and it, it was pretty terrible. <laughs> there wasn't much on there. I mean, it was essentially just CBS and some bad new Star Trek shows that actually made me mad, and it had a terrible interface. And over the last several years, it's gotten dramatically better on every single front. So on the positives, it just has much better exclusives than it used to. The big one they've always had is Star Trek, and it feels like they've actually listened to audiences over the last couple of years, so Strange World, really enjoy that show. Picard season three, fantastic. And then they've you know had the partnership with, with Taylor Sheridan, so you have all these Yellowstone spinoffs where they're attracting like Harrison Ford to star in them. And then you have something like Tulsa King, also from Taylor Sheridan, that stars Sylvester Stallone, so I thoroughly enjoyed it. So they have multiple different exclusives from different genres that actually draw me to their service and get me excited for it. Of course, they also have the archive of Paramount content, one of the great film studios out there, but they're aligned with CBS, Showtime, Nickelodeon, MTV, BET, Comedy Central, the Smithsonian. So they have a lot of brands associated with them and they keep adding. Like Showtime was very recently added. I was like, oh, that's awesome. Like that, that'll that fill out one of the places where maybe they're a little bit weak. They have sports, live TV options, and it's just finally available everywhere. For a long time, they didn't have an app for the PlayStation 5 I, th I don't know what the rationale for that was, but it, it's just always struck me as insane that they didn't have an app for like this top selling gaming entertainment system, but that's been resolved. So it's no longer a knock on them the way it was in the past. On the negative side, their interface has dramatically improved, but it still runs slow. Kind of like the Peacock one where I feel like when I click the button, there's just always like a little bit of a pause. There are Lots of things to watch on there. I don't feel like it's it's my go-to to try and find something. Like browse watching. Maybe some of it's even that little, the interface issue, but I don't go to Paramount Plus to just browse and find something to watch. I go there when I have something to watch. When I'm in the mood to, to just browse, it's all ones higher up on this list. The other thing, while they are partnered with a whole bunch of brands, you know, I personally don't watch MTV, BET, Comedy Central, Smithsonian, or sports, or, or CBS exclusives. So once again, they have a bunch of stuff on there that if that's your thing, that's a plus for you. But for me, in particular, specifically, they're not for me. Thus, I while Paramount Plus has dramatically improved, I can't put it in the top position because I personally don't use it that much outside of some of those exclusives that I really enjoy. Number five, Tubi. Now, my previous versions of this video did not include Tubi because I did not use Tubi. I had all these streaming services I was paying for and I was like, why would I even use Tubi? It's free, it has ads, it probably doesn't have anything good on it. And a couple years back, I checked it out and I had been very wrong about it and I use it all of the time now. The big advantage here, the whole selling point, is that it is free. It is entirely ad supported. And so you kind of go into it with, I think, more modest expectations, and it consistently overperforms. It exceeds my expectations. And based on what it is, it's not trying to be a premium streaming service, but it's a great free option. So on the positive here, of course, it's free. I'll be talking to people like, oh, that's actually on Tubi if you want to check it out. And they're like, oh, I don't need another streaming service. I was like, 
you don't even have to like sign up. You can just open up the app for free and watch stuff. So don't worry about having another streaming service. It's free and the movie you wanna watch, it's right there. And they do have a very robust selection of movies and TV shows, a lot more blockbusters and more recent blockbusters than I was expecting for them to have on there. But really for me, Tubi reminds me of walking through the aisles of Blockbuster, or in the, really in the case of me, walking through the aisles of Hollywood video back in the late 90s, early zeros, that experience of just kind of browsing around trying to find something and having all of kind of these smaller things and big, like all of it, that's what, of all of these, this is the one that best reminds me of that, and I love that. And there's movies I literally saw on the shelf in 1995 that I finally watched because of Tubi. Of course, the negative side, it is ad-based. That means you have to have ads. And I don't like ads. The reason I pay for YouTube Premium, I don't like ads. The reason I use these streaming services and don't do cable and network, because I don't like ads and Tubi is entirely ad-based. And they have zero, like, quality must-watch originals. They do have some originals, but like that's not, you don't go to Tubi like, man, they've got amazing original contents. Their exclusives are fantastic. You have to go into it knowing that this is not meant to do the same thing that Netflix or Disney Plus that they're doing. But as a free option, it's great. Number four, Max, the streaming service formerly known as HBO Max. I believe in my previous version of this ranking, HBO Max was in the number one spot, but I feel all the changes they've made over the last couple of years have caused them to only offer less value rather than more value. The changes have made the service worse rather than better. So it's been knocked back several different places. Now on the positive, of course you have HBO, Warner Brothers Collection, DC, Studio Ghibli, Turner Classic Movies. So they have multiple great archives, several of which are very much my thing. Obviously I love DC based on the sweater that I'm wearing, but I'm a massive DC fan throughout all the decades. So I love that they, and I love the animated movies and everything. So that archive is awesome. HBO of course is an excellent premium cable network and their exclusives have been fantastic for decades. Warner Brothers is a great studio. So there's a lot there. They also have live sports, live sporting events. They're working on adding in a news section. It quite literally says beta. It's that new that they're with their news section that they're adding in. They have early streaming of Warner Brothers movies as well as Fox movies, despite the fact that Disney owns 20th Century Fox. There was a license signed by Fox back in the day that HBO gets first rights to their, their movies when they go to streaming. So a bunch of movies that Disney releases actually go to HBO, or not HBO anymore, goes to Max first, which is pretty cool. HBO, I keep saying it, Max has so much going for it and it just feels like, only dumb decisions are what's holding it back. So on the negative, there's stupid name. <laughs> I gotta say that one there, but like HBO is such a good brand and they removed HBO, a standout brand that people recognize and know is quality. They took that out for the generic word Max. So it's still HBO Max in my mind, as you have noticed from the number of times I've accidentally said HBO Max on here, but they dropped that. But when it comes to the service, HBO is still premium. They're still pulling their weight, but the Max part, isn't really pulling its weight. Like if you look at the number of Max exclusive, not HBO exclusives, but Max exclusives that they put out, the only one that really comes to mind from the last year was Velma. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's their big standout, Velma, nice. And then there were there's some choices that they made where the higher ups decided to license out DC, the DC archive of films to everyone else. So first they dropped on Amazon Prime. Now they're on Netflix and Tubi as well. So part of what made them really good is was they were the go-to spot for DC. That's crazy. That, like they have their own streaming service and they're licensing their things out to the competition. So they lost some of their brand identity. Another one that's frustrated me they're, they've changed up their user interface and I just, I think it sucks. 
And I don't think it's intuitive and it makes it difficult to find things. They used to have the whole menu on the left and it was very tall and it had a lot of options going down. Now they have a menu to the left that's like home search and like my H or my Max. And then they have all these other browse features up top. And so like to get to whatever menu you want to go to, you have to like go to the left and go up and to the right. Like we're playing a game trying to like figure out the maze of trying to find what you're looking for. And some of the options that I used to use all the time, in particular, like the DC tab, it, it's just not easy to find anymore. People have criticized the day and date release in 2021 as for Warner Brothers shooting themselves in the foot, but it meant that HBO Max was the best streaming service. They don't have that anymore, so they're not anymore. In third place, Disney Plus. Historically, Disney has stood for quality family entertainment. I have three kids 11 and under, so naturally there's a lot on Disney Plus for my family. But considering everything they have at their disposal, they have made some questionable choices over the last several years. And uh, there are many questions about the quality part of the quality family entertainment as well as in some cases, family entertainment when it comes to Disney Plus. Now on the positive side, it's Disney. So they have the Disney archive. And that is a lot of movies because they go back over 80 years. So there's so many classics in there. If they brought 20th Century Fox, so they're pulling in all of this stuff from this other gigantic studio. They've started to merge with Hulu. And so now you have this Hulu content on there. There's a lot on there, a lot on there. And things like Bluey, when new episodes of Bluey drop, that is an event in my house. They have premium brand exclusives. You have exclusive high budget Star Wars, Pixar, Marvel content dropping on here. They're taking their big blockbuster brands and delivering exclusive content that to fully engage with these huge brands, you have to have a Disney Plus subscription and watch these shows. There are reasons that's a bad strategy that probably sabotaged the movie that came out last fall, but it is a positive for Disney Plus in certain senses. Moving into the negatives, they probably also have the most disappointing exclusives. When you get into Netflix, they crank out so much crap that they have plenty of bad exclusives, but you don't expect like Kissing Booth 3 to be good. And there's a thousand movies you don't even pay attention to. The problem with the Disney Plus exclusives is that it's not generic random rom-coms or whatever. It's Star Wars. It's Marvel. And sometimes they're spending $35 million an episode for crap <laughs> um, in terms of what it should be. And so it creates a scenario where there are streaming services with worse exclusives or no exclusives, but none of them leave you as just like, oh, I'm, oh, really? Just that heart sink, like that sinking feeling that you get from disappointing Star Wars, <laughs> where you feel like they're diluting the brand. They're taking something that many of us love, Marvel, Star Wars, and making it no longer special. Some of the exclusives were special. Mandalorian at the beginning was special, but they've turned special into just more content to populate a streaming service. And along those same lines, they remove content, which just puts a bad taste in your mouth. There are shows that were created by Disney for Disney Plus that they removed entirely. You can't watch them anywhere anymore besides pirating them. And that just feels kind of gross and icky. I've got a family. How often do we use Disney Plus? How often is it open in my household? All the time, but it should be better. Our runner up, Amazon Prime. Bill, this is the streaming service most designed for like grownups, married couples, in particular dads. As a dad, that works great for me. And I would assume that kind of ties into their specific audience that ties into their origins. So Amazon Prime Video started out as a perk if you had Amazon Prime for their store. If you signed up for this extra bonus membership for their store where you would get 
quicker delivery, you also would gain access to all the streaming stuff. And then it's kind of grown and has its own brand identity and everything like that. But when you have a service like that that appeals so much to grown-ups, you design content for them. So specifically on the positive side, they're just building out a lot of kind of their own brands and their own kind of shows that aim a little bit higher. Jack Ryan, Reacher, The Boys, and even kind of doing some of the movies and stuff they've done with Chris Pratt, with the, the Terminal List, The Tomorrow War, just kind of action-friendly dad stuff. I like those exclusives. I enjoy a lot of those shows. Along with Tubi is the other one that just kind of most reminds me of browsing the aisles of Blockbuster. This is where I go when I just kind of want to mosey around and find something to watch. And I just find all these movies I kind of forgot about from 1994 or whatever. And there they have it. But then they also have premium new releases. They do have live sports. And along with Hulu, they're the other one that integrate with other services. So you can get the Stars expansion, you can get the MC Plus expansion. And that all-in-one experience that, once again, as I mentioned before, I kind of wish what that's what the streaming model was as a whole, rather than having nine top services plus the other stuff. So Amazon is a part of the model that I wish was more common. On the negative sides to it, their, their menus have always been pretty wacky. And part of that is because they, they are a store. And so they think like a store. Having compulsory buy shelves right behind the registers at Walmart and Target because you, you're a little bit hungry and they have a candy bar right as you're about to check out, so you just grab it. And it feels like they're applying that logic to Amazon Prime that doesn't make for a better experience for the user, but might get you to sign up for a bunch of these add-ons that they have. But their default sell settings Half of what you see, you don't actually have access to. They're from an add-on. You have to rent them. You have to buy them. There's some reason they don't have it. And sometimes they'll have movies that they'll, they'll show there, and you can't even rent it. It's not on any streaming service. You can't rent it, but they still have a, a listing for it. <laughs> so there's some really odd things on there, and it just makes for a cluttered search results, cluttered browsing experience. My five-year-old doesn't know what is a part of Amazon Prime and what isn't. She just sees the picture. She can't read. And so there have been times where she's clicked on something and we ended up signing up for like a PBS All Access subscription because she wanted to watch extra episodes of some show. And we had to like, oh crap, we got to undo this. There's things like that that are just frustrating about it. But otherwise, like, I, I think it's really good. They have exclusives, they have new stuff, they have a great archive. But coming in at number one, the original Netflix, a solid, steady performer with a tremendous amount of content on there. And I suspect the reason that they are number one is because they're the original and they were designed to be a streaming service. Now, Netflix predates streaming services. They used to be an in-the-mail service and they realized the future was streaming. And so they've worked entirely just to develop that out. Whereas if you look at almost everyone else on here, they were copying Netflix. They were tied to something else. They were a film studio. They were a store. They were computer tech manufacturers. And they went, we want to be a part of that. We want to expand. And they brought baggage with them because of that. Even as I just talked about Amazon Prime, my biggest issue there was some of that baggage they brought over from being a store. Some of the other ones... They'll have an amazing year based off what the big studio wants to do. And then they'll have a bad year based off what the big studio wants to do. And Netflix is consistently Netflix. And they're kind of the standard by which we judge everything else. So just going through the, the main positives here, they're the original streaming service that started creating content exclusively for streaming. And they've been doing that a long time now. And they've always, if anything, overspent on creating content. And a lot of it is garbage. They're notorious for the amount of junk that they crap out. But there's also a bunch of great things in there. Stranger Things, Oscar-nominated films. There's always great stuff from them every single year. And they've been doing it a long time. In 2022 alone, they put out 89 movies. Last year, they put out 49, or they scheduled to put out 49 movies last year. So just in the last two years, they put out like 150 movies. 
So their originals themselves have become an archive of content and they've kind of got it all in there because they're putting so much out. You have blockbusters, you have premium films, you have genre films, you have TV shows, you have reality TV, you have documentaries. And there's so much of it that's the Netflix exclusive archive, plus they're licensing out stuff from all of these other studios. They've got a deal with Sony. So Sony films go first to Netflix when they go to streaming. So they were the first ones to have across the Spider-Verse. And of the different services, they have the most advanced algorithm. They have figured out to do top tens in there and all this stuff. So it's easy to surface things that you'd be interested in. There's so much on there and they have a lot of mechanisms to surface it for the right person at the right time. Now, there are negatives here. I, I don't feel like their licensed content pops to me. They have a little bit of that um, generic vibe to them. They have a little bit of everything from everyone, but because there's all these other services that are tied to a specific studio, the other ones have a thing that really pops where Netflix, it's, it's more like we've got a little bit of something for everyone. Like when I'm looking for something to fall asleep to, just have on the background while I'm working, I, I don't go to Netflix to do that. Um, there is a lot of junk on there, so sometimes it's tough to find the good stuff, and sometimes weird stuff surfaces. If you go to the top 10 movies on Netflix, almost every single time, you'll find one movie in there, and you're like, who on earth is watching that? Like, a couple weeks ago, Sniper 7 was in the top 10. Most of us didn't know there was a Sniper 6 to make a Sniper 7. Just some random stuff in there, because there's just so much that weird stuff surfaces, but... Um, and, and like Max, they've changed their interface recently and I don't like it It kind of move into like up top and they're, they're all these different directions and it just makes it more difficult to find stuff. But that's to say even the best streaming service is not without its faults and limitations. But if there's one streaming service that I think is like the, the baseline that I would think everyone would have, it would be Netflix. So for me, the original still comes in at number one as the best. If you like this video have got more like it, check out that video right over there. I don't even know what YouTube is recommending to you right now. Also, remember, if you're trying to cut sugar from your diet, add some protein, check out Magic Spoon. The link is down below in the description. Thank you so much for watching and keep talking movies and TV too much. Bye-bye.